radioactive fun with Big Clive. This is my uh, Geiger counter. Well, it's one of my Geiger counters. Uh, this is the more modern one. It's a GC10, and it's manufactured by Net NetIO Devices Co. And I bought this on eBay from a Japanese supplier. And Geiger counters are really big in Japan at the moment. Well, they've been big in Japan since uh, the earthquake hit Fukushima and suddenly a large portion of Japan became radioactive and started flooding lots of radiation into the seas. So, um, yes, there's an interesting video. It was the selling point for me that they actually have this in a plastic case and they're going into radioactive places and it's like, oh, guys, get out of there. So, to make this visible to you guys, I'm going to have to use the Super Apple Zoom feature. So I'm just going to activate that on the iPad right now. Activate Super Apple Zoom feature. Cardboard box. There we go. Zoom activated. And I'm going to turn this on and position it at the top of the screen so that I can shove radioactive material in front of it. And it's now beeping because it's detecting ambient radiation. Now, typically in this area, it's detecting about, ooh, about 20... Um, counts per minute, 20 blips. And what actually happens, that this uh, Geiger, Geiger Muller tube, Geiger Muller tube, whatever it is, um, Geiger Muller, I think it is, uh, this tube has a uh, neon gas and a quenching gas in it and is normally held at a potential of 500 volts. Now, I'd like to get a meter and I'd like to stick it across and show you it's 500 volts between it, but um, it won't show that because as soon as you apply a meter to it, the impedance is so low, the source of the voltage is so uh, minuscule that the meter will just drag it down instantly. And the voltage is stepped up by a choke just being pulsed, a bit like a jewel thief, but uh, run by the microcontroller to a calibrated um, mark space ratio and frequency, and that's supposed to generate a fairly accurate voltage. Not totally sure about that because these uh, the Geiger tubes require a fairly dead on 500 volts or whatever it is for the particular tube um, so I'm not sure how that goes because theoretically if the voltage drifted a little bit too high it could cause momentary just false triggering as it discharged it but having said that this seems to work very well and uh, to test it I've got some um, various things now here's my radioactive spill which is completely non-radioactive almost disappointing because if it was radioactive it would glow in the dark without being charged a light but anyway and this is the common rare earth um, glow in the dark powders which that's based on and again no real significant difference just the same ambient background count rate the count rate does vary up and down it is it will vary between about 30 20 to 30 on average the, over the course of a um, typical minute now the next thing that is slightly radioactive is these uranium glass marbles, or uranium glass, uh, Vaseline gla glass marbles, or uranium glass marbles. It's the same thing, different names. I don't know why they call them Vaseline, because um, Vaseline to me is something that you smear in babies' bottoms to make them smooth, and I'm not sure that you're actually permitted to um, apply radioactive glass balls to babies' rectums. So, um, yeah, there's probably a law against that, so I'm not sure why they call these Vaseline glass. But anyway, um, the Vaseline glass marbles um, are coloured with um, uranium oxide, and it gives it that distinctive yellow colour. Uh, it varies between yellow and green, and it's fluorescent. Um, in ultraviolet light, it will glow quite brightly, a green colour, and these ones are. Mildly radioactive, not super radioactive, but they're mildly radioactive. I think these, are these alpha or beta emitters? Not 100% sure. Or are they gamma emitters? Oh, it's uranium, so they could be gamma, but um, very low level. However, you can buy bags of, of uranium glass beads from the Czech Republic on eBay. And that's a lot more radioactive. Oh yeah. I think I might be heading for my first micro sievert here. Well, of the evening anyway. Yeah, they're highly radioactive, but not, I mean, they're not deadly radioactive. They're just sort of low level. Um, I guess, I'm not actually, I'm sure I should have checked that out. I'm not sure if uranium glass is an alpha, beta or gamma emitter. I'd, I'd guess beta, but I'm not 100% sure. 
However, what is highly radioactive and may actually emit some gamma is these gas mantles. These are um, bullfinch gas mantles. And watch what happens when I place it anywhere near the tube. It just goes like berserk. It really does absolutely start going bonkers. And one of the disturbing things about these, I've, I've researched this, thorium is used on these mantles um, because it's got a few, few special characteristics that make it very well suited to gas mantles. It's got a very high temperature rating in the region of about 3,000 uh, degrees centigrade. It's actually just short of uh, titanium, uh, not titanium, tungsten in terms of thermal tolerance. And it also glows extremely bright um, white when heated uh, up to a fairly high temperature, which makes it ideal as a gas mantle. It puts out a lot of light. I think they've changed to different materials nowadays, but um, these are ones my dad had. He, he used to keep them in a drawer next to his bed and theoretically, um, if these are beta emitters, and I believe they are beta emitters, that should be stopped by the wood of the cabinet next to him. But he did die of a brain tumour, and it makes me wonder at times. Anyway, <clears throat> the thorium was named after Thor, the god of thunder. I'm not quite sure why. And it, it's, you know, it's classed not super dangerous, Um various weird bits of the internet that apparently it's got a half-life of about 14 million years and the uh, although it's a beta emitter primarily and can be blocked quite easily it does decay into sort of gamma as well which is the dodgier one but not in huge quantities but still still lots of radiation coming off this I can actually set the alarm off as soon as it gets above 10 micro uh, microsieverts the alarm in the Geiger counter goes off Hmm, interesting. But anyway, I thought, uh, what if I stick, um, what if I put uh, a piece of aluminium between these? Because aluminium is supposed to block beta particles. So um, I've got a bit of aluminium here, and hopefully this isn't going to dazzle the camera out. But you'll hear it anyway. So here's a piece of aluminium, and I'll move that roughly central. And I'll put the mantles underneath and then sit it on top. And there's still quite a lot coming through. Now that might just be down to the thinness of the aluminium. I'm not 100% sure about that. Hmm. Yes, I think I'll put those mantles uh, well away from me. So, um, yeah, the Geiger counter, it's, it's a neat little gadget. Uh, this has uh, got... Um, compatibility with things like you can plug it into your Arduino you can you can plug it into your iPhone it comes with all these little adapters it's quite a nice little um, unit and the Geiger tubes themselves are just so readily available online um, from Russia because Russia has tons of Geiger tubes I, I don't know why it's this Cold War thing that, that all the hype oh can I mention talking about Russia can I mention that if the Russians could speak English you would watch their videos because the Russians are actually the hackers and geeks and all that. They're, they're really technical, really knowledgeable people. And the bulk of the Russians are actually OK dudes. There's this image that's presented by the media that Russia is some dangerous state that's going to destroy America and Britain. It's not. It's media hype. I'm not sure. It must be financially motivated, but... Um, um, but you can make your own minds up in that. Just uh, just take uh, anything you see on television with a pinch of salt. But yeah, I, I'd say, you know, in this day and age, it might be worth actually buying a little Geiger counter. They're, they're readily available. You get tons of these things, all different forms, including little dinky ones that just plug into the end of iPhones or Android phones. And they're, you, you don't need to use a Geiger tube. You can actually make one using a silicon photodiode with absolutely sealed completely so that no light can get to it because apparently they can be used to detect uh, particle radiation passing through them. But yes, uh, interesting toys and well worth um, having in this day and age.